Papa, 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 papa,
Wow, crazy. So we are uh, going live real quick. <laughs> and I'm listening to the sound and uh, the monitor that I'm just uh, keeping an eye on YouTube and uh, thinking it was the uh, monitor for my camera. So I'm a little couple seconds behind and a lot of button pushing and oh craps, right? So good morning. And if you're up this early, what the heck's wrong with you? Um, I just wanted to go online real quick. Um, I was trying to fix uh, some issues yesterday when I went live, and the live chat hadn't popped up. And I think it all came down to um, a new uh, tablet that I use. I just sit on my desk, my tying desk while I'm uh, tying I just watch YouTube videos and answer emails and stuff like that um, just not being compatible like I don't know what the, this this new tablet it's it's a nice little tablet the videos look great but um, it's just it doesn't you know using YouTube I can't I can't uh, reduce the size of the uh, screen I'm watching and then scroll through and you know see what I'm gonna look at next while I'm still watching a specific uh, video and then yesterday might have been the first time I used it as the uh, monitor for the show or for what I was showing on YouTube but by, by no means do I have a legit show I don't think but um I couldn't do that I couldn't do a live chat and I know there were people that were coming in and out and um, <laughs> the one person that was trying to send me stuff was a guy I fish with here locally. So nobody wants him to watch, right? I don't. I know what he'll tell me. He'll, he'll email me and tell me how dumb I am, right? Or text me. But, so here we are. Good morning. I've been tying, uh, yesterday, I was tying a whole bunch of stuff. Um, mainly the um, the bearded banana and I was doing the barumba heads and after doing a few dozen I was so annoyed at how's my volume holy crap so I was so annoyed at um how the uh, live stream went um, I, I stopped tying after a few dozen um, finished up the room heads I still have one more dozen of these nice big 5 8 flats and I mostly uh, sprayed these just because I had so much so many extra flat uh, blanks in my inventory um, and they were they're just an easy a nice a, a big surface um, that I can spray on and and really see how the paint paint works so I, I have a few of those I was just gonna tie up and stick them in my boxes just to get them off my table and then I tied another four dozen of little white ice jig um, I did a video on uh, two or three videos ago using that um, orange ice dub uh, a ginger hackle and it's just a, a plain white and I painted these up mostly to see how uh, using the airbrush paint for the nose how that would go on um, 90% of my heads, 100, 99% of my heads are uh, epoxy. Um, I, we've discussed that before. Um, that's no massive secret. And the uh, jigs that you've seen, uh, what did we do? That red and white jig recently. Uh, the white jig with the red nose. Um, 
we've probably seen I'm looking at my dad's hat right now hanging up on my my mount uh, the uh, fluorescent yellow with the orange nose uh, the white with the black nose I think I've shown all those before um, those were epoxy paint and the nose that fluorescent nose was um, enamel um, I have a couple gallons still <laughs> uh, and in the stuff works great it's uh, buoy paint so it's fluorescent buoy paint um, that they use to paint buoys that are floating out in the ocean and uh, that's what we would use for our fluorescent colors and doing that nose uh, the red I the red was um, the red and black of course they're not fluorescent the white and the red and the white and the black those uh, were also enamels so doing that um, that 50 50 no or that diagonal paint on the nose what is wrong with me holy goodness <laughs> so doing that diagonal paint on the nose uh, took a little bit of time with the uh, enamels uh, and that buoy paint even had an extra step because it doesn't dry glossy it dries quite dull um, so using the uh, airbrush paint being uh, the polymer acrylic uh, kind of speeding up the process now so you know these paints that I, I recently discovered they've been around a long time but you know I've, I've searched and searched for years and slowly finding some use that will help me out with um, my production without changing the quality so that's what we're that's what I was doing with the paint and um, messing around with that that's why I had those um, ice jigs that um, I just want to get off my rack right now uh, like I said I did four dozen um, plus the other three or four dozen that we tied back when I made the original video those go in my inventory um, this ice season is looking to be a bust um, you know I have to travel 40 minutes away at least um, for small lakes uh, that have safe ice right now um, and go even farther north if I want to go on a larger lake Oneida still hasn't frozen completely. The, some of the bays had ice, and um, I'm not even sure right now how, how they're doing um, as of uh, Friday. So, But uh, I decided to turn the cameras on, and um, one of the things that I've been working on uh, and I have an idea to use a fly rig for walleye in a couple spots um, this spring and summer and so yesterday I was tying up let me get my face out of there yesterday I was tying up some flies like so things like this um, I went I had on my other rack some flies that I did a video maybe a year a little bit longer ago where I tied uh, a Susquehanna streamer so this streamer this type of streamer kinda loaded up with a lot of hair it's a pretty heavy you know it's it's got as much hair as a jig would um, this one was the example from the uh, video using that um, herder's hook. Um, I have a couple boxes of those vintage uh, herder's hooks um, that, my, that my father would tie and uh, fish here, here locally um, in the Susquehanna River. Uh, he was born in Scranton and uh, the family moved 
uh, to Binghamton. Uh, my grandfather was a glass blower for uh, IBM. The original IBM plant was here locally. Here was my version from uh, the video and this is using the uh, I think it's a da Daiichi hook uh, 1750 I left the pack over there because I was uh, typing it in actually I have to get that if we're going to do a sample Darkman good morning the heck are you doing up this early? Um, so good, the live chat is working. Um, it was a few minutes before I, I looked down. This screen, it's not really um, propped at an angle. I'm a mess this morning. Um, so yeah, uh, that hook is a Daiichi uh, 1750. It's a size four. That's what that's what uh, I've been tying them on. I got an order out for a couple different um, styles of hook uh, for what I'm trying to figure out. These herders hooks, you know, I don't want to use up. I think these are an 8 or a 10. I can't remember. I'll have to look up what these herders hooks are. Um, but I think this would be a little bit big for what I want. Um, I like the da Daiichi 4s because, let's see, so here's the Daiichi in the uh, one of the flies I was tying yesterday. And what I was looking for is something that would be about the size of a jig. And though the profile is a little bit more streamlined and thin, the length is, um, you know, the eyes line up and the tails line up. So, um, aside from this little bit on the nose, these are the same same length. So, um, what I've been studying lately, just a couple videos that caught my interest. Um, Uh, let me go back just a little bit. So I've done videos, I, I, I've done at least two videos on what guys called here locally a Susquehanna streamer. Um, it was fished in the Susquehanna River and the Shenango River here locally. Um, and it was just a streamer fly that had a weight 8 to 12 inches up the line and you would cast it out and kind of uh, pull it or jig it sideways. In Mike Valla's book on uh, streamers, uh, the one that came out a couple years ago, I'll have to I'll put in the descriptions after the video um, exactly what book that is. But it was you know one of his books on Catskill streamers. There's a paragraph or two. He grew up in Binghamton. He's probably the, about the same age as my dad. Um, I wonder if they knew each other. I'm not, you know, I don't know. Um, but he talks about fishing uh, the Shenango um, right along uh, the, the stretch that goes along from, uh, I want to say deposit, it's not deposit, it's uh, Hillcrest into Binghamton. Um, Otzeningo Park is right there. And um, there's a couple islands. So he talks about growing up as a boy and you wade across to those islands and it's your own little playground and he, you know, fished from all sides and um, pulling these bucktail streamers. So uh, did the video. I've, I, I fished these a little bit when I was younger too. Um, but, uh, so that, you know, just kind of messing around on YouTube and going down a couple rabbit holes, I had found uh, 
guys that were fishing Wisconsin rigs or um, also called a Wolf Wolf River rig and they had a a three-way there was a three-way rig with a pencil uh, sinker and they had three flies tied on it um, just regular bucktails nothing terribly fancy um, and we're fishing for white bass and walleye uh, a couple videos I watched guys were also grabbing a uh, pike or two which was exciting so uh, it, it got me thinking about um, a couple of the rivers that I fish locally mostly from shore that um, this actually might work really really well uh, there's a spillway locally that is um, terribly rocky and you know even experienced fishermen will lose um, you know half dozen jigs or so um, or lose a jig every three or four casts um, if I'm in a section where I'm losing a lot of jigs, I, I actually switch over to rubber tails. Um, I don't mind losing the lead necessarily. Don't like it. But um, I'd rather lose a rubber tail uh, than, than uh, a hair jig. Though the last time I was there, we did really well. And, you know, I only lost a couple jigs, but I was there for a couple hours, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, in the vise, I just put that number four hook, the 1750 Daiichi. I'm gonna lock in. Uh, I'm gonna lock on some size A thread. We'll just do one of these real quick. Um, I haven't completely decided on the streamer pattern, and I'm nothing against the Wisconsin guys, but those hair streamers look ridiculous. Uh, they look awful. Uh, they're Tied super sparse, super cheesy. They work, um, you know, nothing against them. A lot of them seem to be just a bare hook with just a chunk of hair on it like that. And um, I'm not sure how, with that such a gap like so, um, fishes, because I would think that the hook would ride parallel in the water column. Um, but the hair would, even with the water flowing over, I don't think the hair would really compress down. And then some you see, the hair completely covers the, the hook like so. And again, just looks kind of hideous. So what I've been doing, and, and you know, my example by no means, this is not a finished product for me. You know, I'm going to try to fish something like this, um, and I think it's tied okay. Head's okay. Um, I haven't switched. What what I'll do to when I when I do settle on a pattern is I'll switch over from the round thread head, which it's a little difficult to um, make the nice pretty head with the uh, round thread. So I'll I'll use a regular fly tying thread. You know, a nice flat thread unwaxed to do my heads um, but this is this is closer to what I'm looking for um, I'm gonna do some with the wings on the bottom um, I'm gonna do some with the wings like I said more at a cockeye to angle um, and then I'm gonna fish these in in the spring and summer um, I just think they would be really good in these rocky areas that um, we struggle with, but we know that there's, you know, we fish them because every four or five trips you do pull out some nice fish. So that high, you know, when we've when we've been uh, skunked or, or lost so many jigs that we're mad when we leave, there's always that time you go back and you get a big enough fish where it, it like feeds that addiction, right? So, let's uh, let's continue with this. So, I put on a 
layer of size A thread, uh, loose, loose wraps, they're kind of open. Um, touching wraps is ideal, though this is kind of loose because I know that I'm going to go back over. Um, I'm going to use, I just happen to have this piece of tinsel on my table. This is old, I think it's called Flyrite. I found a case, I found a full case and 75% of another box full of this old Flyrite tinsel. This is actually metal, it's not mylar. It's silver on both sides and um, on that roll, this section's pretty good. Uh, maybe on this, I don't know if it shows up on the um, video, but it, this was the um, part of the tinsel that was on the outside of the spool that's discolored. It's um, some of it looks a little rainbowy. Um, I'm assuming what is this? Maybe nickel plated. I'm guessing. I would have to research on exactly um, what it is, but they're small little fly right spools of metal tinsel. Uh, I saved this for special stuff, but I, I wanted to use it and see what it looked like. And it was a little bit thicker than the mylar tinsel that I had. So anyways, I'm going to lock this on here in the back, a couple wraps towards the bend of the hook. And then with touching wraps, I'm going to walk that thread all the way up. To the eye. Now this is size A thread uh, for a couple reasons. It's cheap, it's durable. Um, this texture I believe um, with the streamers adds a little bit of resistance in the water if you're trolling this or in the current. Um, so it, uh, that little bit of extra drag does pull the fly down just a little bit as opposed if I just had a nice smooth um, floss body. This tinsel, even though it's metal, uh, I do not believe it adds uh, very much weight at all. Um, this is actually quite thin. I'm going to do a couple wraps towards the bend of the hook before angling it back and doing the barber pole up the shaft. So this adds a little bit of flash. Some of the Wisconsin flies that I saw would just do no thread and just a solid, almost like a uh, what's the name of the streamer? Mickey Finn. A nice silvery body. Um, that last wrap I pulled to the outside of my bobbin so I can pick up my bobbin and lock this right into place. A few wraps forward and then a few wraps back over the um, tinsel. Don't want to use good scissors on metal. And, uh, and then tie this off. So normally I would do a dozen or so of these at a time, add some uh, head cement just to add a little bit of durability um, and help with that shine. Oh, here's my mylar. So normally I would use this, uh, it's uh, gold on one side, silver on the other, just regular mylar tinsel. Thought I'd put that away. Um, and the colors I was using for this was um, this green chartreuse and I have a nice steel gray. Two colors that I really like using uh, in the river locally. And where's my black thread? So I got some black. This is a 2 watt. There's no uh, label on this anymore but it's a 2 watt. Um, Danville nylon thread. Go ahead, lock this into place.
I did leave about a full eyes gap between the eye of the hook and the uh, thread. Nice, Sam. Why are you up so early? <laughs> it's my son-in-law. Uh, Sam, if you're still on, I want to try. <laughs> I want to try using a couple of these rigs, maybe down your way. Uh, they say they work for bass. Um, <laughs> I think we need to, you know. I think we need to get some of those Harrisburg walleyes uh, eventually. Uh, maybe that's a summertime trip, springtime trip. So uh, I lock on the two watt uh, thread. Gonna go with this green chartreuse. And you have to go fairly sparse with these. And uh, I'm going to tie this a little bit differently than the um, example. So I prep the, the hair just like I'm tying a jig. Just restack. Take out a couple of the long ones just to thin out the pinch a little bit. A couple of hairs that are crooked. And I think with this, I want to try to tie it not comp not under necessarily, but around. So, and just like with the jigs, I want the tail to extend the length of the body past the bend of the hook, which is just past this fourth marking on my on my vise. trim it. And then I'm going to put it on from the top but kind of let these hairs so I locked it on with three wraps towards the bend of the hook and then I'm going to pull straight up with a little bit more firm of pressure so it pulls that hair straight down I don't want it to twist really but I'm also going to add a little bit of pressure and just let the hair hairs extend around the hook shank just a little bit so there you can see it's there there's still a little bit of space uh, where you can see the hook shank on the very bottom but the hairs are, are more parallel to the hook shank as opposed to riding at an angle and then we'll add this steel gray your cave and nice so here we have a pinch of that steel gray Again, restacked, just pulling out some of these shorter hairs just to thin this just slightly. A couple bro broken tips. And we want this to, this, uh, I want to measure it so it's the same length. But when we place it on, I'm going to place it just slightly back from the ends of uh, my wrap uh, or slightly back from the uh, ends of the uh, green chartreuse but not past that wrap so there's going to be a little bit of a space which will help the top wing just extend ever so slightly I don't like a big um, difference in the top wing uh, I'd rather them be identical or just a hair longer not too much I think it does um, it doesn't look as exaggerated as it would when the uh, flies get wet and then you can you really see the the differences in length even if at that small 
um, it, when the difference is so small. Do I know what I'm talking about 100%? No. Um, a lot of this is, um, what I'm doing is testing. I'm, you know, it's going to be trial and error. I might tie a couple flies and they look awful in the water, don't catch any fish, um, but the exact same color pattern with a, you know, maybe the, a longer wing and that's the fish, that's the, the streamer I'm catching all the fish on. So I'm trying to um, design a streamer, kind of merge some of those, um, what we've learned uh, and, and those, uh, those set in stone patterns that we, uh, we have um, from the guys from New England, from the guys from the Catskills, from the guys out west, um, and, and also combine that with what the guys on Wolf River in, West, in Wisconsin, how they're, what they're actually using. Um, which I think are ugly, and I'm trying to find a nice happy medium between those two. You know, I don't want to tie a Carrie Fisher fly, but I also don't want to, um, I, I don't want to tie the ugly flies. I was looking at uh, flies for sale, five bucks a piece for just practically a bare hook and, and a single wing. I'll tie them for you for a buck a piece. If it just it kills me like I don't get it <laughs> sorry I, I'll sell them to you wholesale for 75 cents a piece so I was I was shocked so this so this top wing I'm trying to add a little gap here at the end very light wrap to lock this on so these there's three light wraps towards the bend of the hook and I haven't tight, uh, put any pressure on this yet. My last strap's going to go around and I'm going to pull straight up before I complete this couple wraps towards the eye of the hook to lock that in place so I can move my hand. Pulling straight up, what that does is it pulls the pressure directly straight down onto that top wing so you don't get any roll because I, I want that separation between the bottom wing and the top wing and uh, that showed up well so now we can finish this um, I, I've brought my wraps towards the eye of the hook I'm gonna wrap this as best I can back and forth to build up the head and you might notice as I'm tying this that the thread rolls every once in a while a wrap will roll forward I'm trying to hide those um, I'm going to coat these liberally with uh, head cement. Uh, when I get a pattern that I'm, I'm completely happy with, I'll get out the uh, UV glue and uh, use those for my heads. The ones that I'm completely happy with, um, when I settle for a uh, completed uh, jig pattern, or fly pattern rather, What are we doing on time? I know the rest of the house is going to start getting up soon. I got to take my son to work. Drop him off. All right, and that's not the ugliest head I've ever seen. It's not the prettiest either. So, uh, but we will tie this off. We'll finish this off with our whip finish tool. Three wraps is all you need. And I try to do that back farther back on the head as opposed to the at the very end. Turn this off. And then we'll give this a liberal coating of our lacquer based head cement. It sounds like one of the dogs are walking around upstairs. Um, I didn't add any crystal flash. Uh, that will be other. That's that's another material that I will add uh, most likely. Uh, but I I didn't on this because we have that mylar tinsel on the uh, shank of the hook. 
So I'm thinking that that's where we're going to get our flash for this. Um, but let me turn my face off and we'll see if we can get a better look at this fly. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any suggestions. Um, if we got guys from uh, Wisconsin, Wolf River, um, anybody who's who's um, familiar with fishing this type of rig and the flies that they use, um, you know, put put something down in the comments there in the doodly do, and um, just let me know. Um, give me suggestions. Um, you know, I have ideas in my head. I know what jigs work for the fish that I'm targeting. Um, I have my dad's old, there's another old video going way back, um, where I found my dad's old um, fly wallet. For the streamer flies he used um, mostly in the Finger Lakes here. Um, they were probably tied early 80s. Um, he probably used them last um, in the early 80s. Um, I can't think of any fishing trips he took down that way after that. Um, but, there, you know, there's a lot of good color combinations and patterns. And uh, Peacock Curl, I might throw something like that on there instead of uh, Crystal Flash. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to... I probably won't show a lot of this. I, I might not do videos um, showing this until I have some patterns that are nailed down specifically. Um, and then I might do something on how to actually tie these to the line, to the leader. Um, almost all the videos I saw, that they would try to show it, but you can't see it on the video. Um, and I'm curious. Um, exactly how they tie this directly to the leader in the middle but get it to ride in the same direction um, I would be afraid that the first fly if I tied it on and it was slightly cockeyed and then I tie the middle fly on and it's slightly cockeyed this way how that's going to track or do they all just track in line with the uh, fly at the end of the leader. Um, you know, I know how this would fish if it was a single f single streamer on the line. Um, so there's there's little questions like that, and until you know we get along a river, you know, with a nice current, or you know, do some trolling with them, I'm not sure how exactly how it work. Um, but I'm at least excited to try. You know, something new. Um, a new technique in um, fishing spots that I'm familiar with and, and see, you know, see if I learn something. I might learn I don't like it, <laughs> to be honest. So, I think that'll do it for this morning. I'm very happy that the live chat worked. That's really what I was trying to figure out. Um, but I was also a little excited about um, talking about this. I do have a bunch of books coming. Um, uh, the last few videos I did, I, I brought up a lot of um, information that I read recently. Uh, Ray Bergman, uh, George Herder, reading through some of a lot of the old um, fishing books from, uh, you know, 40s and 50s. And, f and pulling out some information that's um, relevant to jig tying. Um, and I just happened to stumble across a couple good deals, so I got some books coming that I'm really looking forward to digging through. I'm not promising anything. It, it might not have any information that's relevant or what I tend to find with a lot of these old um, authors and, and publications is a lot of times the fishing books are just republished and retitled with the exact same um, information. Uh, as an example, probably the, the biggest glaring example I have, um, my favorite all-time Catskill tire, um, Reuben Cross. Um, love this guy. His personal history or personal story um, is, a, is a tragic story uh, in a way. 
and uh, somebody as great as this this tire and how things didn't quite work out uh, in the long run you know in, in the end for for this tire um, how he was so influential to other famous tires um, Deddy's and um, Darby's come to mind um, where they were influenced by him um, and their success that um, they seem to still have um, which isn't I don't believe is 100% accurate I'm sure if you sat down with any of the family members and talked to them they probably have the same story as is all tires um, it's feast or famine um, you might be famous I'm YouTube famous right I got a whole <laughs> 400 some odd followers right I'm, I'm I'm a huge influencer on the YouTube um, but uh, it might be a craft that they've done for generations um, but uh, that fame does not always go along with um, fortune um, and vice versa um, and there's all those you know personal tragic kind of stories that that um, are woven into life in general so I guess what I'm saying is um, what I'm getting back to is uh, Rube Cross and his books I've got four books, all different titles um, of his. They're pretty much identical. Um, one book might have left out a chapter. One book might have added um, a little bit extra within the chapters. Um, but they're, they're basically just the exact same book published by different publishers. Um, they stick a new dust jacket on it and call it something new they update a page um, so trying to research some of this stuff is disappointing I guess is what I'm getting at um, so I'd, I'm not promising anything so I'm, I'm excited for the books that are coming and I'm looking forward to reading them and trying to pull out some information that will be valuable to um, uh, advance our discussions um, with jig tying and, and what we can relearn I guess with the craft um, but we'll see um, I'm excited to get them but but we'll see um, I think that will do it for us today if you um, like what we did here um, or have any other suggestions particularly on uh, patterns and uh, critiques of um, flies that we're going to use on this uh, Wolf River uh, Wisconsin uh, walleye rig is, is what I'm looking to do um, put those comments down below uh, go ahead share any of our video videos that we do um, it does help increase awareness of uh, the channel and um, you know go have a cup of coffee and eat breakfast you know um, try not to wake up the rest of the family <laughs> um, and as always keep tying guys in tight lines